Hello there and welcome to Complete Games. I'm James and this is the Aberration Note Read Through for May Yin. Aberration places survivors on what many refer to as the damaged arc. There are many hazards and new creatures and the nature of the environment present a thrilling new world to explore and master. Throughout the map, players can discover dossiers or diaries and notes relating to survivors who provide a backstory to the arcs and what happened. Mei Ying, a character that we followed from the island map, is a Chinese warrior who themed her explorer notes like ancient poems and wrote in traditional Chinese. When we left off in yesterday's notes, she stayed in a village with a group of people she refers to as the Armoured Ones. She notes that she tried on one of their tech helmets and gained an insight into the technology that they hold, and she resided to stay in the village to learn more. So sit back, relax and enjoy. The notes from Mei Ying on Aberration. This village is as strange as the armour its residents wear. They use tools containing light and sleep in glowing metal cases. They offered me one too, but I have refused. I have slept outside with Ayu and Xiao instead. I have no desire to sleep in something that looks like a coffin. They claim that their tools are not magic, but machines. I do not understand how that is possible. On the island, there were many weapons and tools that were new to me, but they were made of real things. How does one touch light, much less shape it? It is wondrous and beautiful, but I wish I understood it. I will have to try harder. It is no use. These machines are beyond my comprehension and I cannot even make the simplest of their tools work properly. Compared to this, training with a spear and sword seems simple. I have tried to earn my keep by helping with chores and other tasks, but I usually get in the way and slow things down. Compared to the others, I am like a child and they treat me as such. This was a mistake. I belong in the forest with the beasts, not among these people in their glowing metal halls. I will ask them for supplies and depart within the week. I asked the woman with the orange hair if I could take some supplies when I left, but she refused to do so for free. She said if I wanted the supplies, I had to try and use the armour first. It seemed like a trick, but I wanted to try the armour anyway. So I accepted. If I have been tricked, then I have never been so glad to be fooled. When I am in that armour, my blood dances in my veins and I can feel the world around me. It's as if I was asleep for my whole life, and I only awoke when I put the armour on. I cannot leave after feeling that, not until I at least master the armour. Perhaps then, but not now. Discretion is the key to the armour. When I started, I would leap further than I intended, turn too sharply or grip objects too tightly. Now I am in complete control. I could scale a mountain while carrying an egg and never break it, but also smash a stone or fight a beast bare-handed. Once I got used to the armour, my experience as a warrior has helped me learn quickly. I can already outpace Jisoo in a race and beat her in a sparring ring. I try to go easy on her now. She helped me out a lot, so I do not wish to shame her. I should probably call her by her proper name too. Diana sounds too serious for a woman that laughs so much. Jisoo fits her better. She doesn't mind it, but I don't think she knows I've named her after an orange. Three days ago, I was asked to help the villagers obtain a clutch of dragon eggs. Only then did it occur to me that they did not have many creatures at their command. They relied far more on their tools. Perhaps this is why they were so impressed with AU. The hunt went well. I had to do much of the work and explain many things, but the others were grateful. It also let me test the limits of my armour. By now, using it is no different to me than wielding a sword, and I welcome the challenge. After the hunt, no one treats me like a child anymore even when their tools confuse me. I suppose we all have different things that we excel at. They've turned into something of a stable master. The others are still unused to the presence of so many beasts and have to be taught how to care for them. It is a lot of work, but I don't mind. It has been comforting to be around so many beasts again. I've also taught them some lessons in close quarters combat. While their weapons are powerful, most of these people are not warriors. They have not tasted war. Jisoo claims she was a soldier, but that she fought by flying metal ships through clouds. She says she will show me how if we ever escape these caves. I doubt it, but it's nice to imagine. Jisoo finally convinced me to start sleeping in the metal pods the others use. I must admit, I slept more soundly, though perhaps that was because I knew she could no longer pester me about it. 
I do many things like the other villagers now. I eat like them, I dress like them, and I work like them. I still struggle with their tools and I know I can never truly be one of them. But that was true during the Yellow Turban Rebellion too. Those who I fought beside were my comrades, but I could never be a true soldier like they were. If that is my place in this village, then I do not mind staying for a little while longer. It is not so bad. I must move quickly. The tribe sent a party into the depths of the caverns, where rivers of violet fire flow freely and nothing grows. They sought something important, something that could help the whole village, but they have not returned. There is no response when we call them through our messenger boxes. The other villagers fear them lost to the terrible demons that lurk there. I refuse to believe that. Jisoo is with them. I have equipped Ayu with armor and weapons like my own, and donned armor that will protect me from the violet fire. Whatever beasts or demons lie in our path, we will destroy them utterly and bring Jisoo's team back. This is a place of death. The ground is scarred and barren, and there is no light or movement save that of the violet fire. Even AU does not seem to like it. The living should not tread here. Why would Jisoo come here? What is so important that she would risk this place? And why would she not tell me? Whatever the reason, it's already cost some of her teammates their lives. I found their bodies earlier today, mangled and partially devoured besides the remains of their beasts. Thankfully Jisoo was not among them. Great towers of crystal loom ahead, where the violet fire is frozen solid. Perhaps she has found shelter there. I shall have to find whoever forged this gun and thank them with all my heart. Its strength has saved the day. With my weapon's enhanced sight, I spotted two survivors running from a huge monster, but a crystal formation stood in my way. Rather than go round it, I sent AU ahead and fired through it. My aim was true and the demon reeled. By the time it recovered, AU was upon it, and we finished it together. I knew one of the survivors was Jisoo when she ran up to hug me. I am unused to such gestures, but I think she understood how grateful I was for her safety. Her teammate was wounded but alive. With rest, he will survive. Even now, I cannot convince Jisoo to leave. I've even tried using her real name, Diana, to show I was serious, but she won't hear it. She says the plans she was looking for are too important. But what could be worth what happened to her teammate? It was disgusting. He started spasming in the middle of the night, and then a smaller version of the monster that was attacking them burst from his chest and tore out his heart. Blood and bones sprayed everywhere, and I was too stunned to act until it leapt upon me. Fortunately, I was able to hold it off until Jisoo could shoot it. Whatever we are seeking, I fear we will face even worse dangers to obtain it. Jisoo said the item we sought was in some ruins not far from where we camped. However, when she called them ruins, I had not expected to see buildings like the ones in our own village. It was puzzling to see buildings that looked at once ancient and new. I had little time to dwell on the ruins, for we were quickly set upon by more of the great demons. They rushed us, slobbering and gnashing as Juicy scrambled to find what she was looking for. I was able to hold them off with AU's cannons. But by the time Jisoo found her prize, we were being overrun. To my shame, I had to leave Ayu behind to hold the demons off while we escaped. It pained me to hear his roars as we fled, but his sacrifice saved our lives. Forgive me, my loyal friend. Without Ayu, we had to move cautiously. Another battle with the demons could prove fatal, but we managed to avoid their sight. All that was left was the climb. With no mount, we had to use climbing picks to slowly make our way upwards. It was a long and treacherous ascent. We both nearly fell several times. Fortunately, we were there to catch each other and support each other, and through our combined strength, we safely reached the caverns above. After the climb, we lay there for a long time. I cannot remember if we laughed or cried. Perhaps both. Jisoo says the item she found could help the entire village, but I do not care. I am just so glad we are both still alive. We received a hero's welcome when we limped back to the village. The others say that Jisoo's treasure will help complete a magic door that can take us all off this place. They speak of escape and of returning home. That should excite me more. I used to long for those things. Yet what comforts me most when they speak of their future, they include me in it. 
I am finally one of them, not as a mercenary or out of desperation, but because I am wanted. I owe it to Jisoo, I think. No, to Diana. She trusted me before anyone else. I will not forget that. I have been thinking of home lately. It's so far away now. I think that perhaps it is out of reach. Even if the others complete their magic door, I do not think I will ever see it again. I can accept that now. I can move past it. I have a new home now and I think, while I'm not used to its oddities, I feel as though it is mine. Each day I grow more adapt with the tools here and more used to my routine. It has become normal to me. And now that this place is my home, I swear that no harm will come to it. I shall protect it with my life. And that concludes part two and Mei Ying's notes on the Aberration map. Don't forget to let me know in the comments down below what you thought of the notes from Mei Ying on Aberration. And of course we will be continuing with more Explorer notes throughout the month of December. If you are new here and you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to myself for more Ark Survival Evolved content. And until next time, I'm James from Complete Games, and I'll see you.